So we're continuing with our car rental company and normalizing this table. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new entity. So an entity is just basically a, a rectangle when we use uh, an entity notation. And inside that entity, we are going to place our primary key. So what did we select as our primary key? Well, we said it was transaction ID. So trans ID is, and we'll give the notation PK for primary key. And all the other data then becomes dependent on that primary key. So what does that mean? Well, if we change the primary key that we're looking at, we change all the other related data with it. So if I'm looking at 002 and I want to know which car ID exists with transaction ID 002, we just go into our grid and we'll see that is B2. If I say, well, wait a minute, I want to look at 001, what's the car ID that is related or dependent on 001, and that would be A1. So a tool to do normalization is we are going to write all of the non-key attribute outside of our entity in order to get some sort of organization to it. So what do we need? Well, we have client, client number, we have client name. And I'll go and look at my table. We got client contact. Okay, and no need for you to watch me write this out, so just give me a moment. Okay, so here's the, the finished attributes that I've linked up to the transaction ID. Uh, notice that the line total and total amount, I didn't include anything there because when we're normalizing a database, these are derived values. My line total is uh, derived from my date in, uh, date in, date out, which gives me a number of days the vehicle has been out times the rental rate and then a discount is taken off of that to give me the line total. The total amount would then be for all the same transaction numbers. We would just total up the line totals and that would give us a total amount. So derived information is not, uh, it's, it's not included when we're normalizing. So just make a point of that. The program itself is going to deal with the drive data uh, just to uh, expand the point a bit more. Is if we take drive data and put it into the database, then we can have potential integrity problems with it because if any of the information changes, uh, how that information was derived, if we change this rental rate information, then the derived information will change. But if we're not if normalization works on the database level, it's the database uh, doing, or through the rules of normalization, we keep the integrity of the database intact. And since we are introducing a way to uh, put uh, integrity problems into the database by including line total and total amount, then we're increasing the, the amount of integrity problems, and we'll have the program deal with those. So if we get back to our normalization example, uh, we ask, does this table fail first normal form? So that's no repeating elements and no repeating groups. Well, definitely we see repeating elements and repeating groups. So this table fails first normal form. And when we fail a normal form, what we have to do is create a new entity. So we'll create a new entity So now we have a problem here. The problem is, what is going to be the primary key for this particular entity? And let's put a note here. When we fail the first normal form, the new primary key, PK, 
is a concatenated primary key. Okay, so that is an important note to make. And let's go back to our table. Well, looking at our table, what would give us, what would remove all the duplication of this transaction ID? And I mentioned that before. If I were to take the transaction ID and the car ID, that would give us a unique view on this line. So if I wanted to just see, uh, for instance, where I have this re repetition, let's go down here, uh, of these 004s. If I were to take 004B2, we know without a doubt that we're describing this particular line right here. So if we go back down to our example, here we go. So the primary key, and let's just take that out. The primary key is going to be, and let's look again, we got transaction ID, so trans ID, which is primary key. And what else did we identify? We identified car ID being the primary key. So we'll put car ID. And that is primary key. For entity names, this one was our booking transactions. Now this one, since it has a transaction ID and a car ID, we can call it, I'll call it, uh, transaction cars. Now since I've moved car ID, you see the car ID is, is in the new table, along with the transaction ID, and we have to, and I'm going to take out car ID, so let's remove car ID. Okay, I'll take that out. Now that I've taken the car ID, I have these attributes, the car make, car model, and rental rate. They're dependent on that car ID. So they have to, and I'll put a box around those. These have to move and so we'll do it like this. We'll grab them and we'll move them down. And they have to move with their key, like so. And then we'll just put those back into this table, like so. Now I'll scroll that so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. So car make, car model, and the rental rate follow with the car ID. Continuing on looking at this database called transaction cars, we want to apply the second normal form rule to it. And the second normal form rule is no partial dependencies on part of the primary key. Well, you notice that we have two primary keys because uh, a table that fails first normal form is going, or an entity failing first normal form is going to generate an entity with a concatenated primary key. Therefore, we have to do a second normal form check against this table. So let's take a look. Uh, car make. Is the car make dependent wholly on this concatenated primary key? And the answer is no. The car make follows the car ID. So therefore, car ID is going to fail the second normal form. When that happens, whenever remember the rule is whenever we fail a normal form, we have to create a new entity. So I'm going to go ahead here and draw out the new entity uh, like this. And that entity we are going to call, we'll just call it cars. And it gets car ID. So car ID. And then all the items that go with car ID have to move with it. So car ID, the primary key, and which items 
come with that primary key. We get the car make and we get the car model. Now what about rental rate? So let's try this again. Car make, car model, we'll move them over. What about the rental rate? Well this is where we go back to the user of the system. We say well should rental rate follow the car because the car will always have this particular rental rate and they're going to say well no because we we may need to to call back this piece of information later it's very important to us we need that to be stored in the database so in that case uh, these this transaction ID and car ID pairing gives us a particular rental rate that may need to be referenced by something else so it's not going to be derived so we're just going to keep it into the database